were you when the volcano erupted? We were only two, three minutes away from the crater, taking photos. Holy oh, shit! We had just reached the crater and just taken photos and just walked away from there when the eruption happened. So we were very close and when it did hit us, it was just within like a minute of running. It was that fast. We saw it, we didn't realise that it was an eruption or something like that. We just thought black smoke was coming out for some reason. And the first thing we did was take a photo, not realising that's an eruption and the danger. And then only a few seconds later, we heard the front tour guide scream run and that's when we realised, crap. You know, just a split second decision to just bolt. The most terrifying moment of my life and you just had no control of anything. I didn't think I would survive. I thought I was going to die. It was just rolling me over. The force was just that strong that my whole body was being shoved and pushed and rolled onto the ground. I was just hitting things while getting burnt at the same time until the eruption had sort of passed and came to a stop. That's when I was finally able to just stop on the ground and I was just left where I was not knowing what to do, just coming to terms with what had just happened. And I just thought, what now? I was trying to stand up. My first thought that came to my mind was to stand up and just get away. I don't know where to, but just to get away or move forward as close to the edge of the island possible, maybe get to the water, just something. But even standing up was incredibly hard. It, the wind was just taking it right out of me. It was just all knocked out of me. I had no strength at all. You just knew you had to get as far away from that crater as possible. Yeah. I was so scared that another eruption was going to happen. The noises that were coming out of a crater petrified me. So that was my biggest concern, that another eruption was going to happen. At that point, did you know where your dad and sister were? Had you lost them? I had no idea where my sister and dad were. I couldn't see anything. Um, when standing up, it was also hard because you were just feet deep in ash. It was like walking on the sand on a beach, except it was much higher. So I didn't end up finding my dad and sister until I had fallen down a hill. I managed to get up. I had walked a few steps forward and then I fell down a hill and I landed among a group of people. My dad and my sister weren't there, but after a while I heard my dad scream out my name and that's when I responded yes, back to him. Um, and that would have been easily around 10 to 15 minutes after the, the eruption had already happened. I remember um, trying to stay comfortable because I, at that point I had realised I didn't know where forward was, everything was black and even the sky you couldn't see clearly in front of you because it was still ashy. You could only just make things out maybe a few centimetres ahead of you. In the end it was up to the local helicopter pilots who volunteered to come out and help as many people as they could. Yeah, those helicopter pilots are heroes because that's not their job, they didn't sign up for that and they still chose to put their lives at risk for us. And it amazes me that they did that all on their own with no help. And what they did was just so heroic. You know, they put themselves at risk without the proper gear and without knowing what the volcano 
was doing at that very second. You call the helicopter pilots heroes, and they certainly are, but they also think that it was your father on that day who was a hero. Yeah, when I spoke to one of the pilots and they told me what my dad did and that they saw him as a hero that day, it just brought me to tears because I didn't have a clue, I didn't hear anything my dad said. They told me that he had asked for us, his daughters, to be put on the helicopter first and that he told them to grab other people before they took him as well. And hearing that just, it made me feel so loved and grateful to have such an amazing dad who did that for us and for other people, it just amazed me. And I wish I could thank my dad and tell him that he was a hero. I wish I could just let him know how amazing his actions were on that day because I knew, I knew my dad was in a lot of pain as well just from hearing him yell. So to do that, I know it would have taken a lot. I reckon he knows how grateful you are. <laughs> I really hope he does. <laughs> That's true love, you yep. know. It's the love a father has for his children. It is. It really is, and he's always been like that. He's always been the dad that puts his kids first before anything. He could have no money on him that day, and if I asked for a hot chocolate, he'd find money somewhere <laughs> <laughs> just to give me that hot chocolate because he didn't care. Whatever he could do for us, he would do it. <laughs> yeah, you were his world. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.